colbyjack.net is proud to present From the Flames by Tricia M. Wilson. The people of the fire, the Blessa, led by their queens, have ruled the island of Alfea and oppressed the Driva, the people of the ice, for more than 16 generations. With the Drivian king in hiding and little hope on the horizon, the Driva looked to one person to save them from the vile Blessa, the Diviana. According to legend, the divinely gifted Diviana will one day overthrow the Blessa and restore the Drivian king to his rightful throne. But with the search having lasted for more than 400 years, will the Diviana ever come to light? Willow is the slave of the Raskpil family. Bought at the age of four, 20 years have passed since her life irrevocably changed. Her existence is no worse than any other slave. But within, Willow wonders if there isn't something more she should be doing with her life other than serving the ungrateful. Ordered to travel with her master's family to Sondertoft so her master's adult children can take part in an ancient rite of passage, Willow is shocked when she learns that she too must participate. Will she fail as all before her half? Will she rise to the challenge and become stronger after passing through the flames? Episode 48 I'll tell you, not that the story is very long. The length doesn't matter, Hawk said at once. Some of the shortest stories ever told are the most meaningful, while the longest and most in-depth have no substance to them, leaving the listener feeling empty inside. Why did you get so philosophical and poetic, she asked, laughing a little, when I met you? Quit stalling and tell me all about you. I don't know a lot about my mother. But from the little I do remember my dad telling me, my mom was the nicest person he'd ever met. She died right after having me, caught a fever one day, and was dead the next. Dad was devastated, but he was determined to raise me right. He worked from home, so I spent a lot of time with him. To this day, whenever I smell leather, I think of him. What was he like? Willow smiled. He loved to laugh. I remember us always laughing and having a lot of fun. He was also really generous. One memory that stands out is when a woman came to him asking for any leftover leather he might be willing to give her. When he asked what she was going to use it for, she said she wanted to patch up her children's shoes. He gave her the leather and then offered to make new shoes for her children at no charge. The woman was so grateful. Even at such a young age, I knew what he'd done was big-hearted. Memory swarmed her mind, plunging Willow into the past. She could almost remember what he looked like, what his voice sounded like. But it had been so long that she couldn't remember the details, the nuances, which had made him unique. Then she heard the echoes of his laughter and his hugs and felt the endless love he'd showered upon her before he'd been ripped away, and she'd been plunged into a loveless existence. Silent tears ran down her face, splashing on the ship's rail, and a lump formed in her throat. Gripping the rail tightly in an effort to push back the memories, she felt a hand settle over hers, squeezing in silent support. What happened to him? Hawk asked very quietly swallowing to make the lump go away. It took a while before she could answer. I was four at the time, and he had to go to a nearby town to deliver some of the items he'd made. He left me with a neighbor who'd watch me whenever he had to travel out of town. I was playing with the woman's kids when the woman pulled me aside and told me that my dad was never coming back. She said he'd been killed by highway robbers on his way back home. I stayed with her for the next few days and watched as they buried my dad next to my mom. I kept asking her how he could be gone when I was still here. She was nice and tried to explain that these things sometimes happen, and I was too small to really understand. 
After a week or so, I asked her if she was going to take care of me now. And she told me that as much as she'd like to, she couldn't. She said she had too many children already and couldn't take in another. She then said that she'd been looking for any family willing to take me in, and that she'd finally found one a little ways away from there. They promised to raise me and take care of me. She warned me, however, that my life wouldn't be like it had been with my dad. She made me promise that I'd be good and always do anything they told me to do. My mistress came to get me the next day. As we rode away from my village, she said that I was her slave now, and that I would do whatever she said or else she'd sell me to someone else. She warned me that anyone who would buy me wouldn't be nice people or treat me half as well as she would. I had no idea what she meant. I'd never heard of slaves before but I didn't like the sound of these people she'd sell me to, so I promised to be good. When we finally got to her home, I met her children, who seemed nice, and her husband. I thought they'd be my new family, and I guess as I grew up, I kept that belief inside of me so I could keep going. Did they ever treat you as one of the family? A little, in the very beginning. I'd been living there for a month or two when Naya and Ricky finally had a few friends over. When they were asked who I was, the twins said I was their new sister. Mistress Brigida overheard them and stormed into the room. She sharply said that I was not their new sister, I was their slave, and dragged me out of the room. She told me I wasn't allowed to play with her children's friends and that I had chores to do. The twins never made that mistake again. From that day onward, they always introduced me as their slave. As they grew older, they treated me more and more as a slave and less as a friend or unofficial sibling. By the time we turned eight, I was known to everyone in town as their slave. Period. I was nothing else to them. Silence was the response to her final statement. Then Hawk said, To them you must have been nothing but a slave. But to me, Val, Sigurd, and even Adelina, you're so much more. I know, I'm the Diviana. Willow knew she sounded forlorn, but at that second, that's how she felt. No, that's not what I meant, Hawk said in a frustrated voice. Staring deep into her eyes with an intense look, he said, Yes, you're special because you're the Diviana. But you're more special for who you are. You're a good person. Consider it, and a joy to be around. Your kindness shines through you, and your compassion knows no bounds. I never want you to think or believe, even for a second, that you're nothing but a slave. You are so much more that I can't even begin to tell you. Do you understand? Yes. Nobody's ever said that to me before, she whispered. Tears poured down her face. Hawk pulled her into his arms, giving her a hug. Willa brought her arms around him and rested her face against his warm chest. She felt so safe, so loved. She didn't ever want to leave. They held each other for a very long time. Finally, Willa pulled back and wiped away the remnants of her tears. She avoided looking at Hawk, uncomfortable that he'd seen her loss of control. But Hawk wasn't going to allow her to hide. He cupped her chin and raised her head until her eyes came to meet his. Gazing at her with very soft eyes, Hawk said, So we're headed towards your village, right? What? She asked, gawking at him as if he'd lost his mind. Why would we go there? Because you have unresolved feelings about your slave family and their treatment of you. They hurt you so badly that you feel the pain to your soul. This must be the hurt which has to be healed, even if it's resolved by an ugly confrontation. You need to learn the truth about how they feel and why they acted the way they did. You cannot continue on until you've put these hurts behind you and possibly forgiven them. Me? Forgive them? Why would I? How could Hawk think she'd forgive them after everything they'd put her through? 
Sometimes forgiveness is the only way to move on, he said. Have you forgiven your grandparents? She asked. She knew the answer even as she asked the question. Why should she let him off the hook? If he hadn't forgiven them, she didn't have to forgive anyone. No, but one day I hope I'll be able to understand why they acted the way they did, even if I would never have done what they did. Willa turned to look out over the sea. It churned like her mind, the dozens of different thoughts rolling around her mind like the different waves crashing into the ship. It was only after she'd shifted through her different thoughts and feelings, however, that she finally capitulated. Fine. We'll go to Chris Holler, but there's no guarantee they'll actually talk to me. I think they will, Hawk said confidently. Why? You no longer resemble the timid, scared, and unsure woman I met a few months ago. As your gifts have grown and your knowledge expanded, your confidence and true self have blossomed. If you stay the strong person you've turned into, they'll be the intimidated ones. You have a lot of faith in me, she said with awe. Of course I do. I'm falling in love with you. How could I not believe you can do anything you put your mind to? Hawk said, before kissing her softly on her lips, before leaving her to order the needed course change. You have been listening to From the Flames by Trisha M. Wilson. Read, recorded, mastered, encoded, and produced by Colby Tracks. This work is released under a Creative Commons 3.0 Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. Do what you want with it, just don't try to profit from it. Heaven knows we can't. If you have any questions, comments, or rants you wish to share with us, we can be reached at colbytracks at colbyjack.net. At C O L B Y T R A X at symbol C O L B Y J A C K dot net. Yep, I sing it too. If you want to follow the exploits of Trisha in Twitter land, just search for Lady Trisha W on Twitter or follow the ever dashing, courageous, hardworking, intelligent, and immensely humble Colby Tracks on the Twitters as well. If you find that you can't just wait to find out what will happen with Willow, the strong dude and the annoying dude, be heartened to know that From the Flames is available from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Smashwords, as well as from our little shop. Didn't you know about our little shop? Why, yes, we have a little shop located at shop. That's S-H-O-P dot Kobejack dot net. That's shop dot Kobejack dot net. Yeah, real original there. There you will find the latest ebook versions of all our works in both Mobi and ebook, all DRM free, as well as audiobook versions of such works as Firmware Hijacked and Proxy, as well, naturally, as well as From the Flames. The audiobooks differ from the podcasts in that the headers and bumpers only run once, and the episodes are grouped in hour long episodes for easy burning to CD or for downloading on the go. If you find you don't need any stuff, but just want to thank us monetarily for our efforts here, just head on over to colbyjack.net, select either audio or visual, and look for the donate button located on the blog roll. Well, anyway, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week, and remember to be fabulous.